Hey guys, welcome to the Cup of Nurses podcast with your hosts, Peter Fendero, myself, Matt Slarchik. This is a podcast where we tackle current health news and hot nursing topics, one conversation at a time. Guys, hit that five star. That's the way we grow. That's the way we have been growing. And we would appreciate if you share us because we get rankings and we get more noticed by the friends and family that you share your episodes to. So please like, comment, subscribe. And as you know, things are continuously coming out with us. So just tune in in September or wherever month you're listening to and keep checking us out. Petey, what are we talking about today? Uh, we're going to talk about a few things, but you know what? I just had an idea. You know what we got to buy? We got to buy that little uh, mainframe, whatever, with like the six or eight buttons where you can click a button and it makes a sound effect. You do that? That's what we got to buy and put in some cool sound effects like when we choose ourselves and... Or we something funny like a doo doo or something like you know something interesting. Okay, we could, we'll make it entertaining. Yeah, we'll we'll put that on the on the business card to do list. list. Yeah. Well, okay, guys, so today we're gonna talk about unions. So today let's talk about the pros and cons of nursing unions. While prominent in some states, a lot of these states actually do not have an option for nurses to unionize. California currently has one of the largest and strongest nursing unions in the country. So Matt, what is a nursing union? And if you look at it, it's basically a organization that is to create solidarity between you and the healthcare system that you're working for. It's a way to monitor and control your wages, your benefits, your working conditions, the, the legal actions that are happening, and ultimately they're advocating for you as a nurse for the workforce. Yeah, so. and yeah, it's interesting because like when you think of unions, you think of like the plumbers association, like the electricians, more like trade trade jobs that have unions and I actually didn't even know nurses had unions up until we traveled nurse in Oakland. Okay. Like I didn't know that there was like an option to unionize. I know that here in Illinois, there's what University of Illinois that that has um, unions, correct? Yeah. And a few other ones. It's not very predominant here. A lot of hospitals here in Illinois aren't unionized. They're, they don't have any kind of union union power. Um, I think uh, the county is also Stroger might be also, also union if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So or they have good benefits. One, one or the other. Yeah. So when we say strong unions, meaning like Illinois has a union, but for example, it doesn't have patient staff ratios so different parts of the united states these different states have different advocacy measures that are put in place so not every state is the same and when we say california's largest yes it has mandated lunch breaks and everything else that you've been hearing about and like i first started my experience working for union when i was 16 actually i was UPS. A, yeah for ups i was there as a forklift operator while I was in nursing school, and I started getting familiar with the whole thing of seniority, filing grievance. Mm. Like, let's just say your employer sends you home. Well, there's a chain of command. The per- the person that's the least, the bottom of the totem pole, gets sent home first. Mm. And then it goes up, you know? So the benefits of a union is, hey, if you're working longer, you have more perks. Yeah. And if you're on the bottom, it kind of sucks because you're at, always getting the short end of the stick in this case. Yeah, I haven't had, like I said, any prior experience with unions even though I did work while I went, while I went, to, went through school and, you know, after I turned 16, um, I started working. But these were non-union jobs. Like I worked at a deli for a few years. I worked at like a Polish store for a little bit. I did a construction uh, for a little bit, did some remodeling, things like that. Like helped, helped up my mom at, you know, at the bakery that she, she works at. So I never had like any kind of union experience. And my first union experience was actually in Oakland and I loved it. You know, that, that's for me, somebody that doesn't, um, that, that doesn't come from a union, union place and sees benefits. But then again... We were travel nurses, so we did not get the full union benefits. Oh, yeah. No, but then we also did have to pay union dues. So we kind of got like a little bit of the union, union, ben- union benefits because if you think about it, even though we don't have, we're not in that union, we still have to follow our contract. So a lot of times, like Matt said, there's seniority. So if you're a more senior, you get sent home first or last, you said? Uh, the higher the seniority, the more ranking you have, the longer you would technically stay, or you have the choice of leaving okay. instead of somebody. So you just, and it depends what company, correct? This True. is my experience through UPS. Mm. Um, let's just say maybe like we were in Oakland. Well, the person with more seniority would not get home sent. You know what I mean? It'd be another person because the problem what happens with these unions, and we're going to talk about the pros and cons, right? One example is is if you worked at this hospital longer than me and they send you home but they left me there you could file a grievance Mm. so one example is i got sent home after four hours you worked eight hours longer than me but i have more seniority i'm going to file a grievance to the nursing union and they're going to come back and i'm going to get paid for those eight hours that you worked because you violated you know um Uh the policy and what the contract is but who gets in trouble for that the charge nurse because obviously the union people aren't gonna be like okay 
we, we sent you home. We shouldn't have. We're going to pay the money. There's, it, there's always... Who's, who's a fallback on? Do you know? It, it's, it's management. Fish? Because, management. Um, for example, the last contract I worked at, the, the supervisors did not have the union. The mm-hmm. charge nurse that was official, the supervisor on nights, wasn't in the union. So management is set aside. Mm-hmm. And that's where that... Um, it creates that solidarity among workers, right? So you could have a, either have a good relationship or a bad relationship. You know, when, when I worked at UPS, I saw the negatives of the union. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I, we, there were lazy ass workers and they would manipulate, they would milk the damn clock and they were allowed to do it. And no one else could tell them otherwise because that's the contract. You know, they, they have to move an X amount of shipments through trailers for UPS. And if they completed five bills per hour, they cannot get fired. Mm-hmm. So they could, you know, F off. They could go, excuse me, use the washroom and the union protects like lazy workers, you know? Yeah. So the, the main, the main debate between union versus non-union union is the unions with all these regulations and all these controls and all this bargaining power, are they actually more efficient and more productive nurses compared to the non-union nurses? And that's been debated with all career paths, all work roles. Like, are unions really that, that beneficial? Do they help with productivity? Because technically, as union nurses, we have more say in what gets done in the hospital. And we have, like I said, more bargaining power. But if you have more bargaining power, that's going to ultimately lead to slower efficiency, right? If yeah. you need to have a a collective agreement with all the nurses or you know the elected nurses that run the union it's going to take a lot longer for things to get done compared to if you just have manager make the decision right because then technically our input does matter but doesn't doesn't matter to the extent where they could change um the, the policies or procedures based on, on our needs right yeah so that's like the, the have been the, the whole debate the whole time and we did some research and we couldn't really really find it we never we couldn't really find a direct research study or or any kind of articles that directly link unionizing and, and productivity. We found like patient ratios and productivity, patient ratios and like nurse happiness and, and burnout, but nothing just looking at unions, right? That's the main thing. And I'm not sure why, I'm not sure people aren't doing that research or is there just not enough information to make a decision or they might not even know how to compile the research. Like Peter, how would you start that off? You know why. I mean, I don't know why. The reason why there isn't research there because it's benefiting the nurse not the damn hospitals. True. Because the hospital is going to pay more money now for these nurses because now they need mandatory lunches, ratios. They can't give them a third patient in the ICU. That's not going to happen. You only could have two because I am protected by the union for that. So there's the only benefit for this research is for the damn nurse. But the thing is like, look, but what if they'd reach it and it shows that... You, that uh, Decreases nurse, mortality or Yeah, something. what if they, that says that nursing unions cause less more mortality and better patient satisfaction scores and I would less love turnover rates. What if, what if that's what I said, then wouldn't that be more cost effective if it's leading to less turnover for, for nurses, better patient outcomes, and like a better patient ratings? Wouldn't that attract more people to the hospital? You'd get obviously more recognition. You would get more um, government kickbacks, things like that, right? I agree so with knows? you, but instead we, we're just loading nurses with pizza, man, and food, and we're just kind of shutting them up and keep like working pizza. hard. I like pizza. Yeah, so I, I hope in the future we are able to advocate mm-hmm. like that and maybe create a more positive approach for unions, you know what I mean? Because they're, they're kind of shamed upon sometimes. And like the way it works for your, like, like it's, let's just say hospital, usually you work for a hospital, non-union, they give you your benefits, your pay, how much you're going to get, the working conditions, and that's all right. But the, the union is like this little third party that kind of negotiates everything, just like you said, through collective bargaining and you'll sign a contract maybe every four years or something and the union is kind of vouching for you so you know sometimes people get pissed because now they can't have you know 360 hours of you know paid time off sitting in their bank and now it's only 240 but they got a guaranteed five percent raise for the next three years Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of bargaining that happens with the contract depends how strong the union is and that's that's what you get away with yeah what happens sometimes with the unions that like i've read online is that uh, the one with the unions is, unfortunately, if you don't agree with where the union is going, uh, you're kind of get pushed aside. You do. Because it's a collective agreement with everybody and, a, and the majority wins. The majority is going to win. You might not like it, but the 51% is always, is always going to win because they're, because this is just like voting basically. If 51% of the nurses agree to decrease time off, but 
increase the pay percentage per year, then that's the route we're going, even yep. though it might not benefit you because you don't want to be there long term, you know? So that really doesn't benefit you like an increase of 2% of, of a raise every year more, right? Because if you're gonna be short term, you don't care about that. You'd rather have your 360 hours, you know, of, of leave because you're short term thinking. Yeah, exactly. And I, I agree with mm-hmm. you. And like one example, guys, of the way a nursing union kind of is at play is I took an example from a hospital in Chicago, the University of Chicago, mm-hmm. During C-19, when it was happening, the whole pandemic, um, nurses did not have hazard pay. So the nursing unions went out their way and negotiated some kind of deal for these nurses because they were saying this is unfair. So in April of 2020, they announced that you're going to get, you're going to get paid an extra 5 to $15 per hour for a registered nurse and $3.50 to $9 an hour for an LPN. So, mm-hmm. so during the... During the time that like evictions were frozen in lockdown, this is the hazard pay that they got. And it was negotiated uh, very quickly through these nursing unions. You know, it's interesting. I was actually working at my current hospital during this whole, whole debacle. And after this happened and they got their hazard pay, we got a hazard pay too. Because, you know, it looks we're going start, to start spreading like, hey, you know, these people protest their hazard pay and they got it. Like now... Our hospital has heard and you know, nurses are talking like, hey, they just got a hazard pay. What, should we get hazard pay? We're doing the same exact thing. It's just a different hospital. And we didn't have any kind of um, like protests or any kind of riots or, any, or anything like that. And they just gave it to us. Yeah. So that came in clutch, you know, and it's kind of a nice how that worked out because one small, like I don't want to say small because hospital is a big hospital, a very predominant hospital, a very, it's very well acclaimed. It just shows you that how an action in one facility also influences, influences the action of other facilities around it because that kind of gives you like a little like you could say hope like if they did it and they got it passed what's stopping us from doing it and obviously for management if you're the ceo the president the vice president the supervisors you don't want to have protests because that costs money and if people see that hey these nurses instill change in one hospital via protest they're not gonna be hesitant to not incorporate into yours because yep. they saw one example of it working out in a nurse's favor. So they're like, screw it, let's not take the risk and let's just give them this hazard pay. Yep. That's business for you guys. Yeah, so that that's the perspective on it. So like, let's dive into the pros and cons, right? So number one, one pro, we have like a list that we made that we're gonna go over. The first one is job security. So you, you just can't get terminated as a nurse. Just a management cannot come up to you and say you're fired. You know, that could happen a at a non-union hospital. There could be favoritism, like you're not protected for that, correct? So here, you are prohibited from like a termination, right? So it's they're going to protect your wages and benefits. And if an administration like wishes to fire a nurse, there has to be some kind of documentation built up that said, hey, okay, this nurse isn't doing what they're doing, you know? And then there are steps that were taken for these situations and nurse still hasn't learned a lesson. Now we could let you go. You just can't get fired up front. Right, like let's say you want to fire a nurse for for poor patient care, poor patient patient management. And then... The, the reason being is because this nurse keeps forgetting to um, open the clamp for antibiotics. You can't just say that without any kind of proof. You know, f- for a nine in a hospital, you could fire somebody and say, yeah, you're being fired. You're being terminated because of poor patient care. And they don't really got to tell you why or anything. But a union hospital, they got to say, hey, yeah, August 12th, nurse reported s- saying that you didn't unclip your antibiotic. And then August 18th. Same thing. August 24th, same thing. September 1st, same thing. September 8th, same thing. So you've had this four or five occurrences of you not doing this and it's causing patient harm. So now we have to, now we're going to let you go. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you're a nurse in a union and you're like, that's when like they know, you know, the management's on your ass. They probably not like yeah. you. You better start freaking fact checking and double checking everything that you're doing and cover your trail because they're on your damn ass and they'll find something wrong and they'll keep making that list of why they should get rid of you yeah but they literally have to tell you that you're like being warned yep they can't just say peter call my office all right you did not unclamp i've been tubing eight times in the last three months we have to let you go no they get asked they get i do it four times warning like hey peter you haven't unclamped your i've been tubing four times this is your fifth time we're giving you a warning and if you do it three more times you get eight we're gonna terminate you yep. and then six times comes around sometimes seventh time comes around all right peter last warning if you do it one more time we're terminating you it, there's like steps built in. You can't just let somebody go just because, you know, uh, a personality issue or a patient care issue. You got to have that because you got the whole backing of the nursing union. Yep. Because once once a nurse gets fired without any kind of uh, background, any kind of notification, then that's not going to fly because that's going to 
you basically lead by example. So if you let that happen to one nurse, guess what? It's going to happen to another nurse and vice versa. This is where kind of unions stay, stand behind your back. Yeah. And the second one, which I think is like the number one thing is better working conditions. Correct. Mm-hmm. So like one thing why we love going to California patient ratios. Nurse, is that patient ratios. Yeah. And you are, there's mandated ratios. For example, when I was working med surge in Chicago, I had six patients usually. Worst case scenario, when we're, over, when we're understaffed, I got seven, you know? When you're working med surgeon in Cali, it's five. That's it. They will not give you any more because you could file a grievance, you know, mm. and things like that. So, like, that that's what's so beautiful about it. There's mandated policies and safety precautions that, like, contribute to, you know, that would prevent, like, short staffing. Mm. They would prevent burnout and things like that. So, I think that's the best thing about a union. You are paying your dues, right? But you have guaranteed ratios and no one can tell you otherwise chart you and no one's going to piss you off in this case because yeah. the charge nurse can't force you to take an extra patient so i think that also helps that relationship between management and like the nurses right or they give you a financial incentive like hey i know in the union or in our contract it says that we can't take three patients in the icu but it could be like a clause in case of emergency if a nurse has to take on three patients, then we are going to increase their pay for that shift by 30%, by 20%. They get uh, double pay. They can, there's always, you can always have like a clause like that. And that's, that's negotiable. That's the nice thing about, about unions. And yeah, patient ratio, that's probably the, the top thing that I would, uh, that I would think is the, is the most beneficial for nursing unions. Because yep. here at Regan Hospital with no, with no uh, unions and we get tripled, we get doubled with CRTs and it does suck. It's a lot of work. It's mentally tolling, it's physically tolling. And imagine if you're a shorthander for three days in a row, and you get double or triple for three days in a row. They do a really good job rotating, so I'm not complaining. They do a very good job of, you know, not or they do a very good job of making sure that if you got tripled, you're not gonna be tripled until like everyone gets a turn, basically. Yeah. But there's cases where that doesn't always work out, but that's just how life is. Exactly. Another pro for union uh, nurses is that you have guaranteed wages, and a lot of times these hospitals pay more. So even though you pay union dues, everything is negotiable. So your hourly pay is negotiable, your time off is negotiable. And these nurses, they obviously want to make more money, right? So the first thing you're always going to negotiate is the financials, right? So you always want to advocate for a higher pay for yourself. And that's why these union hospitals tend to have a 20% higher higher pay than non-union hospitals. Yep. You know, just, just with everything. You obviously want to make as much money as you can. Yeah. So why not negotiate for as much as you can get, right? And, and same thing, the previous contract I worked is, you know, they were getting all these C19 patients. They were taking like full on ECMO patients. So they were negotiating for pay because at first in this hospital, they were, when you do ECMO, you need a perfusionist usually, right? They're monitoring the whole, the system. Mm-hmm. Eventually they wanted nurses to manage everything themselves. They're in this bridging process of perfusion is helping to them manage an ECMO full, full on. And they're like, well, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna need a raise, you know? They're gonna have to get paid extra X amount of money per hour to manage an ECMO patient. So that's something when I left, they were discussing, you know what I mean? So I wonder if that actually changed. But, but that's, the, that's the stuff that you could, you know, advocate. You're constantly advocating. The union should be constantly advocating for yourself. That's what you're paying for. So that you could take full advantage of that, you know? Yeah. And so like... Go ahead. I was going to go into the next one. So was I. Perfect. So the fourth advantage is seniority. So seniority matters. And I was explaining earlier that if you're, you know, at the bottom of the totem pole, it's going to suck at first working in the union because you're always going to be sent home early and the nurse that's there longer has these extra freaking perks like picking a schedule, right? Or, you know, whether they want to go home or not, they have that option. You, you're just going to go home if it's, you know, if the hospital has to send a nurse home because they're overstaffed. Yeah. And that's good, like, long-term thinking, you know, because when you're a new grad nurse, like, first of all, you don't really care very much about, um, or you don't really have time to think about, I don't want to say I guess I, I don't know how to otherwise to word it, but you're not really caring about the safety of yourself as a yeah. nurse. You know, like you're willing to take on these extra patients. Why? Because you're a new nurse and you don't really know what to do. You don't really know what to expect. And so you could kind of like use this to advantage for management and you could kind of um, prey on the newer nurses and younger nurses because they're willing to take on more, right? Because as, as the years go by, you become smarter as a nurse, you start to work more efficient and you start to realize like, hey, um, this isn't the safest thing. Like, why should we be doing this? Like once you kind of get going and get the ball rolling like you kind of know what your safety 
uh, measures are as, as a nurse and yeah. kind of your, your safety line. So this attracts people, union hospitals, because the longer you stay there, the better benefits you have. Yeah. You know, maybe over X amount of years, they increase your 401k for, for seniority. If you live there over five years, maybe instead of getting a 4% match, now you get a 6% match yeah. or whatever. And like Matt said, you maybe you could pick a weekend off or you could be every third instead of every other. You could get a first pick at the schedule. Holidays. That's what kind of, exactly. So that's, that's what kind of... These, a lot of times, junior hospitals, if they have older nurses that have been there for a while because they understand longevity perspective yep. you know compared to us where we're in our early mid-20s we're we have more f- freedom to move around we have more financial freedom because we don't have a family we don't have any kids you know we're not tied down anywhere so we don't really care too much we care more about the pay right and then once you get older your 30s your 40s you kind of want to settle down because you don't want to keep moving around like you have kids they got to go to school they got to settle down so you're better off taking a little bit of a loss in the beginning for the benefits you're going to reap longer down the line yep. agreed man the fifth one is educational reimbursements for that one it's like i would honestly be like it's 50 50 you know sometimes hospitals will offer it when it comes to the union it's on contract it's guaranteed you're going to get an educational reimbursement let's just say they'll cover 100 percent of your master's degree mm-hmm. but you have to stay there an extra year afterwards so there's different commitments to that but you're guaranteed at a union hospital because it's in print yeah what so. else what else they could do is is they also, they can also do like a like a education reimbursement, reimbursement scale. So if you stay there for two years, you get this much. Three years, this much. Four years, this much. You know, and they could work that to their advantage again if you're thinking long term. Yep. And I guess the next one we go into unless you have anything else to say about school education. Negative. So better benefits. So this is gonna be your medical, your dental, your vision. Like I said, this is all negotiable. If you work in a non-union hospital, management or the hospital or whoever. HR, whoever facilitates, facilitates these conversations, they're the one that, that is saying, this is what insurance we provide, take it or leave it. In a union hospital, you you yep. could debate it. You come in as an agreement like, hey, we, we like this plan and then management or whoever does it comes come says, how about we do this plan? And you kind of debate and you kind of uh, got to come into compromise that which plan best with the nurses. Yeah, and this labor union that you have will kind of vouch for better benefits. You know, like when I worked at UPS... We had freaking free health insurance, man. Mm, it was a good, it was a good ass perk. Like I, was, I had my mom's insurance, and I had UPS, and I took advantage. I had extra pair of glasses. I was able to kind of pay double amount of money from my, both of my insurances to go see a chiropractor when I was younger because I fell off the dock. So there's definitely perks of better benefits when you work for a union. Of course, it's uh, more likely. We just don't have the research whether this is actual fact or not because we couldn't find much. Yeah. But for the most part, unions do have a lot more pros and cons mm-hmm. when it comes to the nursing union specifically. Yeah, especially longer too. You know, it's interesting that I just thought about, we both got hurt uh, at a prior, at like a prior, prior employer, right? Yeah, we did. Interesting, yeah. I wonder how much people get. Well, we did, I remember like months back, we did um, another episode regarding injuries in nurses, didn't we? Yeah. And it's like a large portion of nurses actually get injured, right? I and mean, we should probably re- retouch upon that. It's pretty interesting to take a look at how research is now. Exactly. I'm down for that time. one. So next one, guys, next positive, number seven, is going to be guaranteed process for grievances. So in a non-union hospital, you get tossed a short end of stick, and short end of the stick, and you guys got to deal with it for that day. You got tripled. Nothing you can really, really do about it. You've been tripled for three days in a row. Nothing you can really do about it. You just got the short end of the, end of the stick. Yeah. And union hospitals, you can file for grievances. You could say, hey, contract says I can only get tripled once a month. This is my third time being tripled this month. And you can file grievances, which is which then leads to most of the time financial reimbursement, which is what what everyone's basically seeking, right? Yeah. So the benefits is let's just say you're filing a grievance against the hospital because they're not upholding the the state ratios, correct? So that that's a benefit because you guys are coming together as a nursing unit and filing grievance, right? The negative part of this is when grievances become stingy amongst nurses, meaning, oh, that nurse, you know, got called in and I didn't. And now you're filing a grievance against the nurse. So if there is that nurse that's getting favoritism, she's going to kind of feel shitty now because, damn, there's nurses that are after me. And it's just part of seniority. Mm -hmm. And you have that ability to file grievance for that. So that's like a double-edged sword there. You know, sometimes it'll benefit the unit. Sometimes it's going to hurt that teamwork that you have on the unit when it comes to nursing. I could have said it better myself, Matthew. Thank you, man. Eight, of course, the ability to strike. You have, and this could be a con depending on what's happening in the hospital. Mm -hmm. 
So this goes um, both ways, but it's a benefit that the union is representing representing you. And if there's something unfair that's continuously, you know, happening, that that healthcare system is not upholding the negotiations that are on the contract. You as a union that are backed up, you have the right to strike without getting fired and things like that. Till that contract is, you know, held up. You know, perk of that is during this time. They could also hire like agency nurses, those strike nurses that we kind of talked about, high ass pay, by the way, and they're able to fill that in to kind of cover the, what's happening. Yeah, and sh- and strikes are not very beneficial for the hospital. And the reason why hospitals want to avoid these strikes is one, they have unsatisfied nurses. They obviously got to fix that, but it also costs more money because now they have to worry about how do we hire more nurses. You know, they got to get travelers, they got to get nurses from basically, you know, out of the blue for the most part. Even, even though legally if you want to strike, you have to set a date, X amount of days before you actually strike. You can't, you can't leave the hospital one day and leave these patients, you know, yeah. on, on, um, like under no watch at all. You have to plan for this. It usually takes like a, I'm not sure how much the days is, but at least a month, you know, so not everyone's surprised. And what this ultimately does for the hospital is a lot of times it decreases patient satisfaction, satisfaction yeah. because now your staff nurses are on strike. And who's taking care of them? Travel nurses, agency nurses, things like that that aren't familiar with these these patients. Yeah. You no. Know, so a lot of times, like I can imagine, like my unit. Imagine if we strike. Like we're a very specific unit. If we strike and we leave, it's gonna be very hard to have to uphold the patient satisfaction that we have, just because we're so specialized and because we're hard failure. And regular nurses aren't really gonna gonna know like things. They're gonna be slow to react to certain issues that we can react quickly to, and they're not gonna know how to communicate with the patients or the physicians or even do proper patient teaching. Yeah, but that's like the far-fetched idea. You know, that usually doesn't happen because you have a union rep and that representative comes to your unit. He'll chat with you. That was happening at UPS and I saw it a few times in California where he's going to ask you how the unit's, you know, operating, what's going on. You can share concerns and he takes it to the union labor board and they address issues that's happening on the micro, micro or the macro level. And just like you say, you know, they usually, usually before a strike is going to happen, they're going to be like, you know, your representative is going to be like, hey, I think we have to strike. Nothing is changing. I'm trying everything. And then it leads to, you know, that. And that, that kind of ties into number nine as a pro, which is legal representation. So you are protected by the union, so you don't get fired in early termination. So if, you know, there's disciplinary action that's hap- happening, a union representative is always going to ensure that the employee is being treated fairly. The way I've seen this mostly being handled at UPS, there's workers that are union representatives, correct? So if I'm going to get a write-up for something that I did, I damaged a customer's product or I did something that I kind of messed up with the company, Mm -hmm. the supervisor cannot tell me what's going on. I have a union rep that comes with me And he's standing side by side while I'm getting disciplinary action and he's vouching for me or he's going to protect me if the nursing super or nursing, the the manager, the supervisor was telling or mistreating me. So it's pretty interesting how that works, man. It has its perks, especially for the lazy people. That's legit because like if you think about it, if you're just a regular employee that's working kind of on the lower portion of the total bowl, these supervisor managers could easily take advantage of you. Like they could talk to you in like a professional manner that can kind of hinder your ability to kind of pursue the, the work you're doing or or they come or they talk talk down to you you know yeah. and they can fuck with your emotion and, and things like that. that's why it's very good to have a union rep like that that's there like listening to the conversation you know because a lot of times if we not union, union places if you go complain and the manager complains whose word are, are they going to take a random co-worker that or a random worker that they could just find anywhere or a manager that you know is might be unreplaceable yeah they're obviously going to take that guy's side because it's going to cost more money if they fire the manager compared to this fire a minimum wage worker, yeah. right? So, yeah, there's just a lot of pros, man. And I've seen that a lot with, like, UPS. And in Oakland, where we work, there was the same way you could get protected. Mm-hmm. But we've seen it less in Cali because we are travel nurses. So we're not paying union dues or anything like that. Therefore, we don't actually have the protection of the union because we're independent contractors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So cons of nursing unions, right? One of them is the union dues. So you're basically paying people to make sure what a union does, right? Manages fairly, benefits, wages. Basically, every single week you're getting a part of your check being taken out and put into the nursing union. And that's covering the cost of everything as well. So management and 
everything that they're doing. Exactly. And that could range anywhere from like 400 to thousand dollars a year. It just depends on, you know, how your union works. And also what like we talked about uh, the strikes, when nurses go on a strike, they don't get paid for the hours they strike. They basically, they lose their pay because they aren't working. So sometimes these unions have, or sometimes union, union dues go to a little fund that's like a strike fund that if you do choose to strike, we're able to give you some kind of uh, partial payment or reimbursement because you've been paying your union, union yeah. dues. So yeah, but like I said, if you're th- thinking long term, this is, this is going to cost you, you know, quite a, quite a bit of money if you think about it. But it's, it's really, it's really not, not that much, I mean, in my opinion. But if you're thinking short term, if you're thinking short term, all you really care about is about your financial situation. So this might be not it for you. But if you're thinking long term, you get all these benefits, you need to do this might be a little bit of a fee for all these benefits and perks you might get years down the line. Yeah, like for me, when I was in high school and I had to deal with this, I was like, man, I'm getting money taken out of my paycheck. I'm barely making money. I'm in nursing school. And I could be putting money into something else for this. So to me, it was hurting my pockets because I am already a good worker. I'm busting my ass. Mm-hmm. And I don't need the protection from the union. You know, that was my mentality when I was younger. Yeah. So number two is going to be your actual status of employment and people's or nurses around you status of employment. So like Matt said, you can't just get fired for no reason. You have to have documentation. You have to have proof that this nurse is, is not adhering to policies or not complying with these patient satisfaction modalities that we're, that we're doing. So it's a lot harder to let go of somebody in union. And that, that could be negative because there is some lazy nurses there that you have to cover for or you have to basically do extra work for. And that's, that's un- unfair. But since it takes so long f- for them to f- let go of somebody or it takes so much paperwork and so much effort to let somebody go that this might not even get done. And maybe you give some sneaky nurses that are just on, on, on the cusp of, of like what's legal and what's not and you can't do anything about it. You gotta pick up the slack and it's gonna drive you away from the hospital, yeah. right? So even though you get these awesome perks, you're stressed out and you're angry because this person that you always have to pick up the slack from is not getting getting addressed. And you're always coming home tired, you're always going to work angry because this person is just a shitty nurse and you can't really do anything about yep. it. And, and also if you're non-union and you're going to start a union or you're vouching for one, you can get fired for that, man. Yeah. And that goes into like three, which is like mandatory strike with no pay. Sometimes if the contract is not being negotiated, it's being extended, people are still not happy because you have to reach a consensus, you know, mm-hmm. then the union has the ability to, you know, go on a strike and you okay. vote to go on a strike. You're going to, you have no choice. Even if you want to work, you don't want to be part of the drama. You're sucked into it and you're not going to get paid for that because we're doing a whole strike. Yeah. Sometimes these strikes might be mandatory, like Matt said, and sometimes they might not be, might not be mandatory, but if eight out of the 10 nurses on union go strike and me and Matt stay because we don't really care. Guess what? We get looked down upon, right? People are gonna are gonna be like, "What? You don't want to stand up for us?" Like, like things like that. You you're literally gonna get the finger pointed at. Like, people are gonna be like, "We're striking. You can't strike with us," and you're gonna reap all the benefits. Like, you know, they're probably gonna be not satisfied because this is another one of those group thinking yeah things where if you're not with the group, you're against it. There's no in between. You know. Even, even though you can't afford to, to strike because maybe you got to pay bills, you got to pay for your tuition and you, you, like you're in debt, like you, they don't really care. They're like, hey, it's either you're with us or you're against us. And even though, you know, the strike might work and you might get the benefits as they do, they're still going to remember that like, hey, man, Peter didn't put this with us. Like, and they're benefiting from us. Like, I'm just going to, you know, do my thing. I'm not going to talk to them. I'm not going to associate with them anymore. Yeah. one of the downfalls. Yep. And, and like... Four, for example, fourth con is difficulty removing bad employees. And that goes into the, you know, difficulty removing the bad eggs in the basket. Mm. And the union protects these lazy people because they do the bare minimum just to get by. And sometimes you're going to have other employees picking up the slack. And it's, it could be continuous. It's less in a nursing culture because everybody's on their shit. You're dealing with lives. You need to be working hard. But for example, when I was the forklift driver again, there was people that was neglecting the F out of union and it drove me crazy. So double-edged sword, just like with anything, right? Mm -hmm. And same thing with like, you know, number five is the seniority-based promotions and benefits. Again, double-edged sword, right? If you have more seniority, you're having all these benefits, you get to pick maybe, I'm not working on, um, you know, New Year's, but now these new nurses have to both days and it sucks because don't you want to party on New Year's? And um, yeah, so if you're on the bottom of the totem pole at first, it's going to really suck because you have to look at longevity. 
And most nurses, they're, they don't, they're not staying in the same hospital for X amount of years. Mm-hmm. So you're always stuck on this totem pole of seniority and just, you know, you're on the bottom of the metric, which sucks. Yeah, yeah but yeah, shit happens. So number six is union mediated everything. So if you want to change anything, it has to be union driven. You have to have 51% of the people that, that have to agree to make a collective effort to, to change this. And this is the issue, the issue with this is that one, it takes long. And two, if people don't see, if the majority of nurses don't see the way you see things, guess what? You're not going to get favored. Your opinion is really not going to matter because yep. it's all 51%. It's literally everything is done by vote and the majority rules. The majority always wins. Yeah. And that goes into seven, man. Like the freaking politics. Like you got to deal with membership fees, the dues, right? Now you have political purposes and there's agendas in place and people are trying to make some money. You're negotiating the contracts and you're upset with like what's happening you know, all this time we're getting snipped. So it just, or you could even like, like my tip with, with politics, like maybe there's a new mayor that's running for office or a new governor and, you know, the nursing union supports one over the other, but you actually support the one that they don't support. Well, guess what? Too bad. We're going to help this guy get elected, even though this is not in your best interest. It's in the union's best interest. They're going to go yeah. with whatever they think. And you don't like the candidate, but the union does. Guess what? Too bad. Are you, are, you know, California Nurses Association is going to vote for for Jim Thomas over F- Frank Marlowe because that's just the way way it is. And I prefer Frank over, over Jim, but guess what? It doesn't matter because union decided to go for this guy. Yeah. So it's like, it sucks because you're paying union dues, so they represent you, but now they're going against your personal views. Mm-hmm. And it is what it is. You can't do anything because majority rules and... Yeah, you'll be in the union that sometimes you're not benefiting from everything. And that's just part of the the collective bargaining that unions have to offer. Yeah, What's your overall opinion of, on union nurses? So, so, yeah, like at first, I feel like, see, we're always good at giving perspective, but we're not telling people how we feel. I, at first, did not like unions because I always had, I always had a good with employers, man. I always knew how to freaking bust my ass. You know, my work ethic, my work ethic was good. And I never cared for them. I knew how to be on the good side of the manager and um, unions didn't benefit me for that reason. So I always had a negative opinion when it comes to shitty, you know, employees and you have to be stuck working with them. When it comes to nursing now, Mm -hmm. I I do change my view. I feel like we need we need nursing unions in hospitals because the healthcare system is a business. It doesn't give a shit about us in a way you know, not always right, but we're talking big picture here. And ultimately I've seen it with, you know, C nineteen and everything else, we always get effed over, man. And we're always working harder. We're always coming second. And I'm tired of it. Mm-hmm. We we need patient ratios. That shit should be mandatory on a national level and it's still not, you know, like cool man, let's do universal income in the future. But for nurses, man, we should be vouching for mm-hmm. patient ratios large scale. Yeah. What about you? Uh, my opinion is personally, large hospitals should have nursing unions, no problem, especially like these serious trauma one ICUs, things like that. They take on a lot of sick patients, patients because like a lot of time being tripled in, in that situation, people are really sick is the most detrimental mm-hmm. and the hardest work you're ever, you're ever going to do is when you're tripled with, with two hard patients. One could be easy, but if you have two really hard patients, like you're kind of screwed. And like smaller hospitals, I feel like can get away with not being really, really union because a lot of times there's a small hospital, it's usually everyone's really a little bit closer together. So you're more likely to work as a team compared to like a giant university, university hospital. The small community ones, they can get away with it because like a lot of times their acuity isn't as high and you know, being tripled might not be the, be the end of the world. Like it might not be too bad. But overall, I enjoy unions. I love the patient ratio that they have. I love the, I love that they get to pay, they get usually paid more. You kind of have mandatory breaks. Yeah, mandatory breaks, all, all those benefits. And like the main debacle that, that I have mm-hmm. myself is like, how am I going to get along with a nurse that I think isn't a good nurse? You just have to work the system, guys, just like with anything else. If you see somebody not doing a good job, like you have to, you can't just stay quiet, yep. especially if, if you're union. Because the more times, you, I don't want to be an asshole, but or like a snitch, but the more times you report somebody, the more times you catch things and let somebody know the more likely they are to not, I don't want to say get fired, but the more likely they are to at least get talked to. Like, you know, me as nurses, like if I say bad nurse, I don't want the nurse to get fired. I just want the nurse to become a better nurse. 
and me telling her what she, she or he is doing wrong might not, might not mean to her as much as a charge nurse saying something or management saying something, you know, because technically we are, we are equals, we're even, and nobody wants to, wants to be, wants to hear somebody tell them how to do their job, right? Even, yeah. even I don't, but that's, but I'm very open-minded and if somebody tells me, hey, Peter, you're doing doing this wrong, or you could try and do it this way to improve. Like I'm open to it. Like yeah. I'm I'm down to change. Sometimes I like I make mistakes, and you know people tell me, "Hey, yeah, you just fucked up." And I'm like, "How do I fuck up? This is how you fucked up." And I and I change it. Yeah, no, it, I'm not that egotistic where it's like like no, I've been a nurse for three and a half years. You only been a nurse for a year. That's not how you do it. I'm not gonna listen to you. No, it's right. not. It's, that makes no sense at all. I think being straightforward works very well for mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Instead of. If you have that bad nurse instead of like filing grievances or you know right away to talk to them needing those disciplinary actions before they get rid of them yeah just tell them straight up like you're doing this that and have an open conversation mm-hmm. and i i think that's why also we've been successful to the way we are with everything that we're doing is because we're both straightforward yeah. like there's no there's no bullshit yeah. and that's what you need sometimes because a lot of people just suppress what they want to say and then now they're feeling you know, like they bring it home. Yeah, they say hello and smile, but internally they freaking hate yeah. you, yeah. and 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 your energy is not matching there, and that's freaking mentally exhausting. Yeah, and then like like we said, you bring it home. Like you're upset at a coworker, and they're making you mad, but you didn't say anything. You didn't open your mouth. You didn't express your feelings. You, you go home, and then you're pissed at the world. Like what what does the world do to you? Nothing. It's just that coworker that you work with that you just been hesitant or you couldn't grow the balls to you know oh, yeah. um give them like valid construct what's that word where where you're not talking shit about somebody but you give them like good advice constructive like, criticism constructive criticism, beautiful word where instead of giving a constructive criticism and explaining how you're feeling and how they are hurting you you just decide to keep your mouth shut yeah and, and that's where we kind of talk about remember taking things personally don't take things personally just grow from the damn failures like it's kind of funny because you know, on social media, we like get all these like posts and all oh, be positive because A, B, and C, like we know the words, but we don't live them through action. That And that's a difference. And that's what you need to do. Like understand that failure has its benefits. And even in nursing, you know, don't take it up the ass. Just freaking learn from it. <laughs> I mean, like you like that kind of shit. I huh? Guess, so you get, <laughs> I'm, <imagine. laughs> I'm just saying it how it is, man. Just don't take it personally. Don't take it up the don't butt. Take it. Don't take it up the butt. You know, just freaking learn from it. Even if. I'm freaking like, I feel like I'm hot shit sometimes knowing my stuff, but I learn all the damn time and I'm asking questions and I'm humble enough to ask. Yeah. And there was plenty of times that I'm like, damn, man, if you didn't ask, you would have known yeah, or you, you would have messed up something. Yeah. Good you ask, you know? So it's like, we're all learning. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be, don't be, ups- don't be upset when someone like tells you something that you know you don't you don't like and don't be hesitant on asking questions yeah like when you ask questions and your coworkers see you asking questions they're getting more prone to asking questions yeah. and then there's nothing better than you know nursing work as groups and ask each other questions because even though you guys have done the same dressing change over and over again they might have done it different and you're just wondering like all right how the hell do you get done so quickly with these dressing changes and you know i do this over this i was like oh shit for sure that's how that's how you get out so quick it's like yeah it's still a senate it's still sterile and everything you just do it differently and by you opening your mouth and asking questions that opens up the whole room for conversation because then people are usually don't want to be the first ones to ask anything yeah you know and and uh, in fact no one ever wants to ask anything because they don't want to feel humiliated or you know people are going to a lot of the issue is, especially when you're a senior nurse, people look up to you. These young nurses look up to you and you don't want to be vulnerable and you don't want to show that, hey, you don't know everything because you want to be there for everybody. But but guess what? You know, that's going to make these new nurses feel so much better because you're like, okay, Peter's been here for three and a half years and he still doesn't, doesn't know anything. He's still asking questions. I've been here for a year and I don't know as much as he does. But if he has any questions and, I, and he doesn't know everything, then it's okay that I don't know everything, yep. you know? And it just, you develop bond and just good communication. Yeah. Even like, let's just say in the ICU, like with the respirators, there's people that don't know how to properly sedate patients, right? Mm-hmm. It's a freaking art, man. You're, yeah. you're, it's an art with medication. And sometimes I'll go, go up to a patient or I've had it done before when I had a busy shift, like, dude, your patient's breathing over the vent, you know, his blood pressure, you know, his heart rate's a little bit high, sedate him a little bit. Go go up on a fentanyl, man. I think he's in pain. So sometimes we're doing constructive criticism to, our, to each other, and that's what's so cool because you just learn and you're teamwork, and that makes you a better nurse at the end of the day. Yeah. I like to say it's better to over-sedate than under-sedate because, like, 
like it's crazy. You, there's like a fine medium. Like because if you over if you oversedate somebody, guess what? They're gonna drop the pressure. They might go brady cardiac. They might go to cardiac arrest. Yeah. And if you undersedate somebody, guess what? They're wild now. They they're gonna be tachypneic. They're gonna be tachycardic. They're gonna be you know hypertensive. All that. So you gotta find a fine medium. But a lot of times, I feel like people tolerate over sedation better than under sedation. Yeah, man. And, it, and it's okay. Be honest. Like, don't, like if new nurse comes on and you over sedate somebody and you know, before they were responding to pain, they were opening their eyes and now they're not, don't say, oh, I don't know what happened. Like, you know, be honest. Like, hey, yeah, I over sedated him. He should be fine in, you know, a couple hours to give him a chance because you don't want people to freak out. Like, oh shit, this guy was just responding. Father commands opening his eyes and now he's not. But the truth is you overstated him. Like, it's okay that you overstated him. Like, shit happens. I overstated people multiple times, you know, yeah. as much as I don't want to admit it. But sometimes you just you just do. People tolerate drugs differently. And, you know, um, one or like five mLs an hour of, of, or like five, five a probe an hour for a grandma might be too much. Yeah, it's a small dose, but sometimes this is how it is, yep. you know. And, you know, you don't, you don't know that until you actually try it. So just, but like, like neuroscience, things like that, if you know you overstated somebody, just say you overstated them because then nurses are be like, okay, for sure, then this patient should be coming out of it in a couple hours yep. or in an hour. They're not having a stroke where they're not responding. It's just the sedation. And then obviously it's been four hours, five hours, the patient's not coming out, then they might've had a stroke, you know, Agreed, which man. is kind of shady because like, if you would've took them down right away, then, you know, the outcomes were, would be better, but yep. technically like you overstated him. So you're just being honest. Yep. Yeah. It's um, it's a fine line you walk yeah. in the ICU. I want I want to keep talking, man, because this is the fun stuff. I'm a little bit rusty from work. I'm excited to get back into it, but I think we should wrap this one yeah, up, man. Wrap it up, guys. Thank you for listening. This was an episode about nursing unions, the pros and cons, the nitty and the gritty. Why you should maybe be vouching for a nursing union in a hospital. So we'll chat with you guys next time. Yeah, and let us know how you like our shirts, guys. Peace. Check out the shirts. Don't forget to check out the vlog. We're always going to be live on these episodes. Peace out.